Hello guys, once again it's Matt and today we have another video, thank you all the members, all the patrons, make sure to subscribe and let's get into it guys. So today I wanted to talk about PESA and AESA Raiders. So basically if you don't know, some aircraft in the upcoming patches, in the, in the future in general, will have some form of electronic scanned array Raiders, okay? The PESAs and the AESAs, right? The passives and the actives. Um, radar, uh, electronic scanned array radars, right? Uh, but, I mean, which of the aircraft that we can receive in the soonish kind of future will have that? And mainly, which of these aircraft can be added? Um, you know, which of these aircraft we can actually expect in a soonish future? Uh, we're going to talk about five, uh, technically five, but it's a little bit more, aircraft um, that we might and probably we'll see with this type of technology uh, in the game not that far from now, okay? So first things first, what is a PESA or AESA Raider? So basically this is what a electronic scanned array Raider is. So basically here we have a PESA, okay? So we have one transmitter and we have a computer over here and then we have something called the phase shifter that it's controlled by a computer okay and this is emitted by these little uh things over here so how it works is that instead of having one big emitter or transmitter if you will that just goes uh with just one radio wave being you know emitted he actually has one that it's divided in many phase shifters over here uh in the case of the PESA or many transmitters in the case of the IASA which means that you can actually uh, delay or basically do whatever you want with each singular one uh, that you have. So, for example, an IASA radar can change the frequencies between the transmitters so that uh, packages of them uh, can actually have a different frequency for other packages in the same radar system, for example, um, or maybe uh, being very hard to actually, um, you know, use a uh, beep counter it by ECM, for example, or something like that. Also, uh, because you have a lot of transmitters, uh, the area that you are trying to detect is divided by many smaller ones, so they can have an instant or near instant detection of targets. And another good part, and one of the main ones that a lot of these raiders use this thing, is to actually basically not be able or not be uh, needing to actually uh, tilt the radar to the side or everything or to upwards or downwards for you to actually detect the target. Electronically, they can actually change where the radio, radio waves are going for it. Uh, this works uh, in this example, for example. If you noticed, uh, it has a delay from the shifters over here. If you were going to actually detect a straight target over here, they would be transmitted at the same time. All of them at the same time having a very near uh, instant detection um, for the square of detection ahead of the target. But if you do this, basically a wave of delay. So this one emits first and this one with a little bit of a delay. Then this one with a little bit of delay from this one and so on and so on. You can have actually a line coming from uh, the actual radar as you see making the radar tilt the detection without actually tilting the radar itself. So it's a very interesting concept. It's very complicated to explain, but this is what PESA, IESA are normally, okay? So it's a very, very advanced radar. It's kind of scary to think what these things will do to the game, especially together with FOX-3 missiles, and we are not that far from it. So let's talk about the options that we have in a soonish future. So of course I'm talking about a soonish future because obviously we have many, many aircraft that can have these systems in the far future. Many of the, I mean all the fifth gens have it, uh, many of the four plus plus generations have it. So uh, there is a lot of very advanced aircraft that we will see, I don't know, five years from now that we will have these systems obviously. but. Which of the aircraft that the countries use will receive these first? Or which of the aircraft uh, that have these, we will see it first, right, in the game. So, 
here we have four examples and then a final one that I will talk a little bit about it. Uh, the first one that we're going to talk about is the Mitsubishi F2. I think it's just an evolution of the F-16. It's just an, a, a very, very, very advanced aircraft. And I think it will be one of the first IASA Raiders uh, that we see. It doesn't mean that we will come in a soonish future, but uh, it will probably be one of the first, if not the first aircraft with this type of technology. Uh, this can come with other uh, aircraft for the Americans to be a counterpart with more modernized F-16s and stuff. But I still think that the F-16, uh, the F-2A, will be one of the first ones to come kind of alone, to give a little bit of a light to Japan. Uh, the second one is the Rafale. Obviously, the Rafale, since the beginning, already had a Peza Raider, uh, together with kind of its uh, more stealthy kind of uh, design. It can be a very deadly weapon with its Raider. Uh, so a Peza Raider would be very effective with the Mikas and all sorts of missiles that it can carry later if they want to add it. Uh, but the Mikas would be the initial ones, right? Uh, it would be a very, very, very good aircraft. And yeah, one of the best in the, in the game for sure. So the Rafale probably will be one of the first as well. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be the F2 first or the Rafale first. If the Gripen comes, I mean, the Rafale should be coming kind of very soon after it. So it might come before the F2 if the Japan actually gets an F-15 for example so I don't know the third one that I really have a, a very honest and strong opinion that we will see soon you know in one year two years max will be the J-10 man the Chengdu J-10 is uh, the light fighter of the Chinese Air Force you know it is basically the MiG-29 that they have the F-16 you know that type of level of uh, doctrine wise you know level of aircraft and yes, uh, some models have even an IASA Raider technically, but um, the earlier models already had a more advanced PESA Raider. Uh, it can even use the Aspide missile, technically um, the Aspide A, uh, the PL-11A apparently, uh, with, uh, which is a semi-active missile by the way, uh, with being able to be shot at uh, two targets at once so it's technically possible because of the PESA Raider remember it has many uh, phase shifters there uh, so it can basically focus half of them in one target and the other half in another target and get basically two hard locks uh, technically you know I don't know if this is a beep like if this is possible with a PESA uh, unless it's a very very like at the best PESA that I never heard of, about, but probably probably is just you know usable um, in a different way. Maybe I don't know exactly how they would do that, but still uh, because it only has one transmitter. So if the computer can actually bypass the transmitter itself, which I think uh, very advanced PESAs do, uh, it would be able uh, fairly easily to actually lock two targets, but hard lock it, not TWS, hard lock it uh, so they can fire two semi-active missiles at two different targets. And of course, the fourth one, uh, we need to talk about it, even though we don't have a line of interceptors in the Soviet Union, the MiG-31, it was the first PESA aircraft, the first electronic scanned array radar, uh, airborne radar in the world, you know, in the sense of a production aircraft. So, yeah, it can also do the same type of line of thinking that the J-10 can, so technically can uh, lock four targets at once and fire four R-33 semi-active missiles uh, at once in four different targets. So we can use uh, a TWS, but it's more, it's it's like a TWS, but instead of just a soft lock, you are actually hard locking uh, four targets at once and you will shoot at four targets um, uh, with four missiles uh, that are semi-active so it would be very very interesting these are the four aircraft that i think we should expect to be the first four that get this type of technology but then we have kind of the fifth on the list here uh, these aircraft can be added but i don't think they will be added right now i think they are kind of far from now but we can see it um, don't get me wrong uh, it's not like the americans and the russians they don't have other aircraft with these systems but the thing is that I think we are kind of far away from it, so I decided to add it uh, later in the list. So some of them include the Su-27M, for example, which was the first like production aircraft that it wasn't uh, an interceptor like the Mi-31 from the Russians that actually got a Peza Raider. 
uh, of course, later with the MiG 35s, MiG 29Ks, you know, um, all all of them can carry PESAs and even IESAs, depending on the customer. Uh, the SU 35, you know, many SU 30s can have that. But all of those aircraft, I think it's going to take a little bit of time to get to the game. Other versions uh, of F 15s, for example, the F 15C uh, can have an IESA Raider, the F 18E can have an IESA Raider. Uh, F F, some versions of the F-16, very late versions, um, you know, uh, modernized versions that were uh, exported and some of them, I think, uh, even for domestic design, for domestic use, and even some F-15Es, right, the advanced ones. So there is many, many aircraft that will receive these systems. Of course, I'm not even mentioned 5th, 5th gen, right? Of course, if they ever add an F-22, we will see it uh, as a right there, the F-35, the SU-57, uh, the J J-20, I'm pretty sure it has one as well. So all of these Raiders and even uh, more advanced aircraft like the uh, latest versions of the Eurofighters that are being deployed right now, I think, have uh, a PESA Raider or something like that, or IAS, I have to check. Uh, the latest versions of the Gripens have IASs as well. So uh, everybody can have an IASA Raider, but I think these fours, the F-2, the Rafal, the J-10 and the MiG-31 are probably going to be the first four. And of course, I have to end the video talking about, a little bit about a uh, disclaimer. Of course, we technically have an aircraft that has this type of technology in some form, okay? So technically, the Yak-41 has the Zook Raider and initially the Zook Raider that was used in the MiG-29M and Initial K as well, um, and in some Sukhois, I'm pretty sure, but I don't know how many were produced later. They do have a vertical electronic scan, uh, scan basically, which means that they don't have to tilt the proper antenna and they use uh, this type of system to actually be able to look upwards and downwards. Uh, it doesn't like introduce pr the proper, you know, uh, good parts about a PESA electronic scanned radars. But it does help with weight and just uh, being a smaller radar that doesn't have to actually tilt uh, itself to actually be able to detect targets above and below it. So technically we do have our first electronic scanned radar, but it's not really a PESA or as it's just a, a semi-PESA, if you will. It's a radar that has features vertically that remind um, a PESA, but that's pretty much it. And that's the Yak-41 and if added the radar of the big 29 m and k okay but basically this is it guys these are the aircraft that i think we will see these radars be aware of these if this is added instant detection you know tilting the radar very quickly to wherever i mean they're lighter because of that as well and of course uh, being able to be uh, way better against ecm against ground clutter against everything um it can be a very good air to ground radar as well so the the advantages of using electronic scanned radars are way too good to not have in the game in the future. And it's kind of confirmed that we will probably see it. It's just a matter of time. Uh, but yeah, guys, anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe and let me know in the comments if you are scared of the PESAs and IASAs of the world. Okay, see you guys. Bye. Subscribe.